this is a virtual boy. I've wanted one for so long and I finally managed to get one recently on Sendico for just over a hundred pounds, which is insane. I've unboxed this, so go and check out that video. It's in the card. This is a complete set of a virtual boy. This is the Japanese one, so uh, we're not gonna be able to do a lot of, you know, reading, but that's fine because we've got pictures and uh, you don't need to read when there are pictures. That's a well-known fact. This is the virtual boy. This came out in 1995. Um, it came out in Japan first and then, and then the rest of the world after that, which is just the way it is with Nintendo. And uh, it was a massive failure. They hoped to uh, sell, I think, 3 million in the first few months in America and they think they sold like 700,000 or something. So it wasn't it wasn't great and Gunpei Yokoi, the guy who made Gunpei Yokoi, the guy who made this, the Game & Watch which basically put Nintendo on the map and made them who they are now. Uh, he got fired uh, as a result of this, uh, which is a uh, which is a big shame. But then he went over to um, Bandai and made the Wondrous one and uh, yeah, the rest is history, but this wasn't exactly a massive success. However, now revisiting it, it's a very cool thing to acknowledge as a part of history, especially considering VR is something that the most modern consoles, most current consoles are sort of focusing on in some respects. Uh, so it's really cool that we've, uh, that we've got one from Nintendo. 25 years ago. Right, so let's open it up. Uh, before we do that, massive thank you to Zen for sponsoring this video. Zen is a physical and virtual card specifically designed to give you the best shopping experience. There are three main benefits, or Zenefits. One, whenever you buy any electronics with Zen, you automatically receive an extra one year of extended warranty. If it breaks during that time, Zen will sort it for you. Two, Zencare. If you purchase a product and something goes wrong, like you receive a faulty product, the wrong product, or maybe you don't receive it at all, Zen will take care of the issue and handle it for you, much faster and efficiently than you'd be able to do yourself. If the seller doesn't want to help you or you think you've been scammed, Zen has your back. Just find the transaction on your Zen app, click refund, describe what's happening, and Zen will take it from there. With Zen, you can be 100% sure that you're protected. And number three, experience zero fees whilst shopping. No matter if you exchange currency or withdraw cash from an ATM around the globe, there are zero transaction fees. And with exchanges, the exchange rate is presented to you during the process so you know exactly how much you're being charged with no hidden costs. Not bad, right? And they've also recently released Zen Buddies, which allows you to transfer money to your friends using just a phone number. If that sounds good, then click on the link in the description and use code the Retro Future Zen to get a 120 days free trial. So this is it, the Virtual Boy. The US packaging was far cooler than the Japanese one, that's for sure. There's lots more colors and cool things going on. Uh, but yeah, this is it. And it is from the Game Boy line, which is absolutely crazy and means that it actually runs just off of AA batteries. Six of them, but Double A batteries nonetheless. It's very very cool. So yeah, this is the the back of the box really nicely sort of laid out And then the front of the box shows that lovely iconic Virtual Boy artwork in all of its glory. Uh, the controller is a seriously cool thing uh, without any further waffle Let's just take a look at it Boom one thing that I find quite interesting is they show you how to pack the box back up so that the people who bought it back in the day could sell it again immediately and pack it the way that it came. So here it is then, the Virtual Boy. This is a piece of cardboard that comes on top to protect it. And then you'll notice we also get Nintendo Labo. This is actually uh, the very early stages of Nintendo Labo. I have absolutely no idea what it does. So here are the manuals and stuff. Let's take a little look at those. They are quite cool. That artwork there is absolutely lovely. Let's take a little flick through these. Look at how cute that is. Is. It's like, don't shove a screwdriver in me. Don't touch me if you're melting. Don't use me as a weapon. Don't set me on fire. Don't put me in smoke. Don't melt me. And also don't allow me to look directly into sunlight because uh, that will hurt my eyes. So yeah, next up, we've got a couple of peripherals that you could get there. Uh, there's the AC adapter tap, and I'll talk about that more in a little bit. We've got the eye shade there as well. Uh, nothing on the back. And then on that side, um, you could get a different stand, an adjustable stand, which may or may not just reduce ever so slightly the back pains that you get from using the Virtual Boy. Right, so time to actually look at something interesting. So here is the controller. 
And as I said, it's a very cool controller. And you'll begin to see as well that this set is in immaculate condition. Uh, I don't actually believe that this has been used a great deal. And I, and I can imagine why. Um, but as I said, looking back now, it's a really cool thing to look at um, back in the day. I think it was released for around $200, $200 around that sort of price. So uh, it was quite an expensive thing. Uh, but here's the controller. Very interesting design. To think that around about this time, the N64 was on its way, I believe. That was a very different controller to this, so a really nice little controller there. Uh, and you've got action buttons here, start and select, and then you've got two D-pads, which is absolutely crazy. And on the back, you've got trigger buttons, L and R trigger buttons, which is just awesome. And they're actually now in the location um, that this was in back in the day. Before, obviously, with the Super Nintendo controller, uh, they were shoulder buttons, uh, but these are actual proper trigger buttons. So this is a very ahead of its time thing. Uh, the controller port looks very similar to the NES, uh, but it's just a slightly different shape there on the end. So that, you'll notice as well, is where we're going to draw power uh, and give power to the actual Virtual Boy itself, which is quite a cool thing. Right, next up, we've got the exact thing I was just talking about. This is the battery holder. Uh, and this is going to take all of the batteries and your money because uh, the Virtual Boy lasted, I think, for about four hours, or at least they claimed it would last for about four hours. You might get a bit more time out of that now uh, with modern batteries, but realistically, don't expect to play this thing all day long on your six double A's. I don't think anybody owns six of the same batteries, so you'll have to forgive me that one or two of mine are mixed. Right, let's uh, close that up. There we go. That's your little battery pack. Uh, and as you saw in that leaflet as well, you could just buy uh, an, a, a sort of an adapter that allowed you to just plug it straight into the mains as well. But there we go, that slides on just like that. And now you've got quite a weighty controller, but it does feel really solid. Okay, the next thing to look at is the stand. That is the other thing that is included in this box besides the Virtual Boy itself. And the stand is a very weird thing. This stand does not, to me, look like a proper finished product. That is it, that is the stand. It's just a bit weird. And I don't know how small people were, but you know, that that is, it's just not the most ergonomic stand either. There's no ability to raise it up and down. You've got a tilty backwards and forwardsy thing here, uh, which doesn't actually work very well. There we go. Um, but you've got no ability to raise it up and down um, other than if you were to buy the adjustable stand, which is obviously gonna cost an additional amount of money. But anyway, that is the stand. Uh, metal legs, it is nicely weighted. I'll give it that much. Uh, it isn't gonna topple over. You've got a really nice support there, but it just looks a little bit unfinished. I'm not sure. Obviously nowadays, virtual reality headsets are strapped to your face, which probably would have made more sense with this, but I guess they didn't really think about it because obviously with virtual reality headsets now, you move your head around and the accelerometer or whatever, however it works, is going to, uh, you know, register that you're moving around. But with this, they didn't really need that because you just look straight. But here it is here. Let's see if we can figure out what this cardboard is for. Was this some sort of like budget viewfinder thing. Yeah, I can't make out what this cardboard's for, but it, but it fits on, on top of the Virtual Boy perfectly and then has a sort of a cutout for your nose. So uh, is that what that's for? Is it a cardboard? Why is that there? Uh, it sort of clips into place uh, like that. You press that down and clip it on. And there we go. That is the Virtual Boy. And you shove your head in there and you get a headache within about an hour. So let's take a look at some of the things that's on the underside of the Virtual Boy. That's where all the interesting things are. Uh, you've got two ports here. You've got one for the controller and one for a link cable, which was never actually released. It was never utilized, it was never released, but it's there. And I believe some people have made some aftermarket ones. I'm not really sure why. Maybe there's some homebrew games that can use it. Uh, over here, you've got a volume wheel. You've also got a headphone jack as well, which is really nice. So you can actually keep this thing as a sort of a, a personal device, uh, but plug some headphones in and look even weirder. You've got two more nubs on the top to adjust uh, what you're actually looking at. What's kind of cool is the speakers are right next to your ear, so you do get really cool immersive stereo sound, which is quite nice. Okay, let's plug this in. Uh, you will, by the way, need a game in order to get this thing to work. Virtual Boy cartridge, let's plug that into the back. It goes just in the back there like that. Slide that in that way. And then if we turn it on, which is achieved on the controller, a little on and off switch just there, and boom, it's working. Now let me try and set up something to capture that. 
So I've managed to find a way to capture this just using my phone. Uh, hopefully it's gonna be okay. I'm not totally sure yet, but I'm sure it'll be fine. I don't have any other ability to get the video out of this and I don't wanna emulate it because emulating is bad. So let's start off then with a little bit of virtual Tetris and this really feels like you're playing a far more advanced Game Boy Pocket uh, or a DMG or Game Boy Lite. It's got the same sort of aspect ratio as like a Game Boy Advance, but the image is very reminiscent of a Game Boy Pocket, just with far higher quality graphics. And obviously the whole thing just feels more powerful. So it's gonna sort of feel like you're playing a much more advanced Game Boy Pocket, but it still has that vibe as I'm sure you can sort of gather from this uh, gameplay here, but yeah, it's an absolutely incredible experience and obviously the most important part of the Virtual Boy is the fact that it's in that 3D, uh, the different planes and depths of field, which you're not going to get through a YouTube video, unfortunately. It's very nice to immerse yourself in a game. It's, it's, it's literally like when you play a Game Boy with headphones and you're like, oh yes, this has stereo sound. I don't really utilize that often enough. Uh, so when you play this Virtual Boy, you have the speakers right next to your ears, it kind of feels like you're wearing headphones, and obviously you have your lens hood on as well, which is just gonna make you feel like you're really immersed in the game, and I'm doing absolutely terribly. Sudden realization, you can't really see me very well, so let's put the camera over there and play a little bit more of this, but yeah, I mean, as you can see, it's fantastic. I think it looks brilliant. Um, it's kind of a little bit ahead of, well, it is very ahead of time, ahead of its time. Um, obviously, you've got Tetris Effect now, which came out, which is basically the same as this. <laughs> um, obviously, you have the ability to get uh, hexadecimal, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a really, really nice, um, it's a really nice way to play Tetris and, and other games as well. But yeah, Tetris is by far my favorite game for the Game Boy, or at least one of them. So this is a really nice way to play a different version of Tetris. What on earth is going on here? Right, my microphone has completely died, so this is just the phone audio. I'm very sorry about that, but the video is pretty much over anyway. I just wanted to play a little bit of Mario Tennis, but yeah, this is fantastic. A very, very cool way to play tennis, and as you can see, you hopefully will understand that in real life, you're gonna get that sort of depth, which is a really, really interesting thing uh, to experience. Um, but yeah, there we go. I'm doing pretty terribly, but I'm not also actually using the Virtual Boy properly. But it's a really cool thing. I absolutely love this little device and I shall be playing a lot more of it. Typically games aren't too expensive. I'll leave a link to my Sendico account uh, referral link in the description if you wanna go and check it out and see if you can find some Virtual Boy stuff yourself. But yeah, look at this, a very, very cool little device. Let me know what your thoughts are in the